What's up guys? So about eight months ago, a group of my friends invited me to join them on what I would consider to be a bucket list trip. A week of riding in the French Alps, casual 413 miles and 68,000 feet of climbing. I probably should have checked the routes prior to committing to this trip. Either way, I'm beyond stoked to ride some of the most iconic climbs in France with an incredible group of friends and athletes. As I started making a list for this trip, I thought it'd be cool to do a video about what is in my bike bag for this trip, or as I'm calling it, what's in my bike bag 2023. And I'll do a separate video about the routes. I might do like a daily video or maybe do a video every other day. My bike for this trip is my trusty new S-Works Tarmac SL7, the one that I bought in November. This is my second SL7 and it's the gloss black white warranty frame. It's kind of a, I consider it like limited edition. There just aren't a ton of them out there. Between this and my old SL7, I've logged about 15,000 miles and there's just a level of familiarity with this bike that's simply unmatched. Anyone who's had a favorite bike and they've kept it for years and logged tens of thousands of miles understands what this means. Like at this point, I understand the output of every single input to this bike. It's truly incredible. As much as I love the NV45s, I decided to pull the Reserve 4044s off of the Crux for this trip. Reason being is that they're a hair lighter, just a little bit more shallow, and I think that'll be really advantageous for those long climbing days in the saddle. They also have one of the best hubs I've ever ridden, the DT Swiss 180 hubs with ceramic bearings and the Ratchet EXP system. The engagement on these is super, super crisp and they're like my favorite do-it-all wheel set. For tires, I opted for the 30 millimeter Vittoria Corsa Pros mounted with orange sealed sealant. I've heard good things about these tires and I thought I'd give them a try for this trip. I decided on 30 millimeters over 28 millimeters for a couple reasons. Number one, because of comfort, I thought that it might help on those long days in the saddle. And I also felt like having a little bit of extra rubber on the road might come in handy if we have wet weather. What do you guys think of the tan wall on this bike? Drop me a comment below and let me know if you're in the tan wall or the traditional all black camp. I'm still kind of on the fence myself. On this bike, I have a full SRAM Red Axis group with the exception of the crank set. It's the new SRAM Force. I really like the black color in that. I've got 4835 chain rings with 170 millimeter crank arms and a 1033 cassette. For purposes of climbing, it's kind of comparable to a mid compact with Shimano. The bars that I'm running are the 40 centimeter kind of standard physique round bars. I go back and forth on whether or not I prefer these over the Aerofly 2 bars. For purposes of this trip, I think the round bars are gonna be great for long climbs. It'll be nice to have something to kind of put my hands around. I have a 120 millimeter stem here. I have the Pro Stealth Saddle which I really like. I have this on all of my bikes now. I've got a ceramic speed coated bottom bracket, a rundo bottle cages, and this setup comes in right around 16 and a half pounds. I went back and forth on whether to bring the Karoo or the Wahoo, but you know, the climb data on the Karoo 2 is fantastic. And so I think that was kind of the deciding factor for me. I've received a lot of questions about the battery life on the Karoo 2. I haven't had an issue with it. The longest days that uh, we have on this trip are like 80 miles with 13,000 to 14,000 feet of climbing. So I think the Karoo will do just fine. I don't see us really exceeding more than like seven or eight hours out on the bike. I debated between bringing the Prevail, the Protoni Icon, or the Pock Ventral Air. I ultimately opted for the Pock because it just feels really light on my head and the ventilation is really, really good. So again, if the weather gets a little bit hot, I feel like I'm covered with the Pock. My go-to shoes that I've been using for the last couple years are the s 7 Lace Shoes. These are just a fantastic shoe. They're super comfortable. I like the way that the laces spread the pressure across the top of your foot. I don't get any hot spots or anything with these shoes, so they're kind of my go-to and they have been for a couple years now. I brought a light rain jacket. I've got a ton of team kits. You guys have seen my kits, they're pretty loud. I've got a couple of vests or gelays as some of you call them. And I have two sets of gloves, a warm pair and a lighter pair. I'm also really particular about my socks and I think it contributes to overall comfort on long rides. So I'm bringing the Defeat Cyclismo, the Evo Classics, and the Evo Mount Vento. I think I'm pronouncing that wrong. Anyways, I've used these socks on everything from short group rides to my 200 mile loader jet race that I do every year, so like nine and a half hours. And they don't even feel like they're there. And I think that's kind of one of the key components with the socks. I don't want to notice that they're there. I'm also bringing the 100% Glendales and the Pock Propels. I kind of dig the look of these glasses. Probably more important than any of the equipment is how I'm gonna fuel. And for the last couple of months, I've been using First Endurance's EFS Pro, 
Optogen HP, the Multi-V, as well as Ultragen. And look, I've been super pleased with the results. I haven't had any cramping, I've had no bloating. Everything mixes up really well, which, you know, we've all had those supplements that don't and they get clumpy. And at the end of the day, they taste really, really good. So I'm a big fan. I'm also gonna incorporate some Scratch Labs Super High Carb as well as Optimum's Amino Energy. When it comes to extra stuff, of course, because of SRAM, I'm gonna bring a couple derailleur batteries, like 10, 20, 32 batteries, an extra set of tires, just in case something happens, a multi-tool, a small torque wrench, some Osso chamois cream, uh, ceramic speed UFO drip, I'm a big fan of that, Dyna plugs, axis chargers, Nog copper tail light, just in case I end up in a place where there's a little bit of traffic, and overall, I think it's just a good safety precaution. All of this is gonna go in my Evoc Travel Bag Pro. I really like this bag because it has the ability to fit a road bike as well as a mountain bike. And I've tested it with a lot of traveling around the Western United States, and I've never had an issue, knock on wood. So that's what I have in my bike bag for 2023, and specifically for this France trip. I do my best to travel light. I think we all really try to do that. Sometimes it's really difficult, but I know that I can't bring everything for every single scenario. Anyways, I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions about any of these products, drop me a comment below or shoot me a message on Instagram. Happy to chat about these. And if you think I missed anything, drop me a comment below and I'll try to pick it up in Amsterdam or Geneva. Anyways, thanks for following along. Seriously, really appreciate it. Until next time.